Friends, in this tutorial, uh, I will explain the P-data effect on 3D building. Uh, so on a screen, you are seeing one 3D building. It is RCC four-story building. And uh, on the different elements, structure elements, beam and slab, the loads are already applied. So which are the loads applied? Just I will show before to go for the further step. So these are the different loads have been applied, have been first of all defined and then applied on the, the slab at various levels and on the beams. Okay, now, now to check whether P delta is dominant or it is not dominant for this particular building. Uh, so we'll perform two analysis. First is a regular P, uh, model analysis. Okay, we'll perform a regular normal model analysis and second we'll perform model analysis with P delta and then we'll compare the results. Okay, we'll compare the results. Okay, now first of all, modal analysis with P delta. Okay, whatever this, uh, the case analysis case. So first of all, we'll uh, define this particular case. Okay, so first of all, define then load case, define load case. Okay, now P delta analysis, it is a nonlinear analysis, right? It is a nonlinear analysis. So therefore, first of all, whatever the dead load case is there. Okay, so dead load case, so it is required to perform first. Okay, so this case must be a nonlinear. This case must be a nonlinear. So therefore, so how to how to uh, this thing? So first of all, we'll generate one more case, and that the name of that case is the dead load nonlinear. That is a dead load nonlinear. Okay, so here already in this uh, this uh, load case table, already dead load case is there, but it is linear static case. We'll make this as a non-linear case. Okay, so therefore modify this, modify this. Okay, here. Now here just give the name as a dead non-linear. Okay, dead load non-linear. Okay, so this is the name of the case, new case. Okay, now it is a static and here there are two options, linear and here this is a linear and this is a non-linear. Okay, now we'll go for the non-linear case. Okay, so go for the second option. It is a non-linear. Okay, then next here in the load pattern table. Okay, in this table, in this table, now only dead load is there. Okay, but apart from the dead load on a building, we have assigned different loads also. We have applied live load. We have applied a uh, this a brick brick load also. So that load also will take in the in this particular, we'll add into this particular table. Okay, now first, then first is the, apart from this, first is we will add dead load. Number two, as a brick, brick wall, external brick wall, 100%, yes, add it. Then brick wall internal, okay, 100, scale factor one in this is 100%. Okay, then brick wall parapet, 100% yes, add it. Then the dead load already is taken. Then floor finish. Okay, load is already assigned. It is also 100%. Okay, then live load on a floor. Okay, now live load, there is a reduction factor as per IS 1893. So the intensity of the live load is in this model is a three. So therefore reduction factor as per IS 1893 is 0.25, add it. Okay, then this is a then live load of a roof. This also live load category reduction factor is 0 0.25. And lastly, roof treatment, waterproof treatment, whatever is done on the uh, the load assigned on the terrace lab. So it is a hundred percent. So you just add it. Okay. Now in this uh, this thing, the new load case that is dead load non-linear. Okay, so in this, this particular different loads we have been added. Okay, and separate load case, first of all, defined. Then say, okay now. Okay, now here, see, changes is dead load non-linear and it is non-linear static. Okay, non-linear static, right? Okay, again, we'll modify this. Okay, because here, one more thing is that, so it is non-linear, but here regarding P delta, Okay, so there are two, uh, three options, whether 
while performing this analysis, dead load nonlinear analysis, whether the P delta effect are you taking in the this thing? Or do you want to uh, include P delta effect or excluding P delta effect? Okay, so here we have to select the option. Okay, so here we will go for the second option, P delta. P delta plus large dis displacement. This is another, see, P delta and P delta plus large displacement. This, these are the just a two different methods for solving of the equilibrium equation. In my previous uh, video, okay, so already I have explained what is a P delta and what is a P delta plus large displacement. So please refer that particular video. You will understand what is the, the meaning the difference between these two categories. Okay, so in this case, we'll go for the P delta. Okay, P delta case. So it is now this case is dead load nonlinear. Okay, and it is a with P delta, with P delta. Okay, say so, okay. Okay, then again, we'll develop one more lower case. What is that model with P delta? Because already one modal case is there, but this is a regular. Okay, so that is a regular general modal lower case is there. Now we'll develop one more new load case. It's a modal P delta. Modal P delta case. Okay, now modal P delta. So it is a modal analysis. After all, it is a modal analysis. Therefore, go for load case type is a modal. Okay, load case type is a modal. Okay. And here now, it is the software is asking about the calculation of the stiffness. Okay, so that is first is zero initial condition and stiffness at the end of nonlinear case. Okay, now here in this case we'll go for the second option. Okay, so what is the second option is stiffness at the end of nonlinear case. Okay, so it means that it is the meaning of this. Now this particular load case, whatever this model p delta load case it will start at the end of dead load nonlinear case okay so first of all dead load nonlinear case will run dead load nonlinear case will be run and at the end of at the end of dead load nonlinear case whatever the stiffness of the structure whatever the stiffness of various element that will be the beginning stiffness for the modal p delta and the analysis will complete and give the result Okay, so this is the meaning of this. Okay, so here, so stiffness at the end of dead load nonlinear. Okay, so select uh, this thing, uh, go for this option and say okay. Say okay. Okay, now we have defined two separate uh, load cases. First is modal load case already is there, and second is the modal with P delta. Now we'll run the analysis. We'll run the analysis. Okay, so this view, again, we will make as a 3D view. So both are 3D view, okay. Then run the analysis, okay. So we are interested only in two analysis. First is dead load nonlinear must be, must have to run, right? Then modal analysis and modal with P delta. Modal with P delta, it is here. Okay, so these are the four load cases we will run. Then uh, run now. Right? Okay, now see, now here this is a it is showing the deform shape. It is showing deform shape of the uh, deform shape of the normal modal load case. Okay, normal modal load case of the first mode. What is the time period? 0 0.53, okay, normal uh, model load case. Now in this window, we'll see the deform shape of the model P delta case. So deform shape of the model P delta case. And the first mode, okay. Okay, now you just compare the timetable, time periods. Okay, here, what is the time period of a, by using a normal model analysis 0 0.53. And here it is, how much it is? 0 0.54, 0 0.54. Okay, by normal modal analysis, this also it is in the X direction and in modal P delta, this also in X direction. 
so variation in time table is not that much significant variation is there but that is not that much significant this is in the first mode now we'll see in the second mode the result in the second mode so go for second mode here okay so what is time period 0.49 and here okay so here again compare the time period of the zero uh, second mode so second mode for normal modal load case it is 0.49 and here for modal with p delta what is the time period 0.49 so in the second mode the time period variation by both analysis of the model is not significant okay in the first mode very negligible difference is there otherwise it is almost same okay so therefore uh, therefore p delta effect is not significant for this particular model okay and for the comparison uh, just we have taken the time period just we have taken the time period uh, so same uh, variation in results okay we will get in the other types of the the result after performing the other analysis that is uh, whatever the uh, maybe internal forces deformations drift uh, displacements are there so same variation will be the other results so in this case just you compare the model analysis see the variation in the time period if the significant variation is there then the same kind of variation will be will be there in the other results also and in that case if the significant variation is there then the dynamic analysis must be performed by considering the p delta effect this is the conclusion of this 